हेलो डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह दिस साइड टुडे इन यूनिट टू वन सोशल बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द एमरजेंस ऑफ सोशोलॉजी इन इंडिया वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अवर लेक्चर विद टॉपिक थ्री मेजर अप्रोचेस ऑफ वेस्टर्नर्स टू इंडियन सोसाइटी एंड कल्चर By the end of the 18th century three types of western interpretation of indian reality became evident first the orientalist second the missionary and the third the administrative the orientalist were enchanted by the indian spiritual tradition mythology philosophy etc they are the lines on a textual view led to the a picture of indian society as being static timeless and spaceless the missionaries who were zealots of christian religious traditions looked at it as a socio cultural and ethnic system which needed total religious conversion both the groups agreed that according to their observation the practice of hinduism was filled with superstitious and abuses though the orientalist considered the situation of contemporary indian as a fall from a golden age the missionaries of course added a lot to empirical study of indian society which was strengthened by the administrators the interpretation of indian reality by the administrators trained in british universities and in doctrinated by totalitarian rationalism was more pragmatic and more matter of fact their purpose was to understand india in order to exploit her resources the administrators sought to develop categories that would help them in ordering their ideas and actions relating to the life of the natives of indian and help them to avoid the enormous complexities characterizing indian society for example b h baden powell three volumes of the land systems of british india were not just a compilation of data but contained a series of argument about the nature of the indian village and its resources in relation to the state and its demand over these resources baden powell recognized that there were in general two claims on the produce of the soil and the states and the land holders he postulated that the government derived its revenue by taking a share of the actual grain heap on the threshing floor of each holding in order to ensure the collection of this share a wide range of intermediaries between the state and the grain heap developed they asserted in their turn varying degrees of control or ownership rights over land and its produce in addition rights over the land were established by conquest baden powell strongly contested henry mains view that there was only one type of indian village the politically autonomous and economically self sufficient village community it continued to fascinate both western thinkers such as marx and metcalf and the indians metcalf observed 
the village community seems to last when nothing else lasts the idea of the unchanging village community was incorporated into general social theory of the later 19th and also 20th centuries the marxist viewed the british rule as an unconscious tool of history breaking the stagnation indian society founded on unchanging village communities the indian nationalist on the other hand came to rely on r c dutt's economic history of india to establish that it was the evils of british imperial rule which degraded india from this idyllic state of prosperous village republics to the condition of stagnated ruler economy dominated by money lenders and rapacious land lords according to baden powell there were two distinct types of villages in india one the royatwadi or non landlord or severely and second is the landlord or joint village but both he and many and their respective followers were interested in developing evolutionary stages of development of socio economic formations the classifications of villages and their types were also attempted in relation to the institution of caste this was a found advantageous by the administrator since it reduced the need for specific knowledge to act in terms of categories was relatively convenient lately the categorical or conceptual thinking about villages directed attention away from the internal politics in villages and from the questions of nature of actual social relations and economic conditions and gendered by the colonial policy of course the reports such as those of the famine commission of 1901 and concern over the widespread peasant rights and large scale alienation of land from peasant to money lenders prompted the search for remedial action and the number of official investigations into the socio economic conditions in the villages were made although some knowledge was acquired the ground reality was ignored here we want to close this lecture thanks for listening